<laughs> we were going to a scheduled meeting. <laughs> yeah, it's a fantasy world where we can escape our regular lives. <laughs> we read to the we booked a meeting room. <laughs> yep, we booked a meeting room. And we invited our attendees. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we since <laughs> since Calendar died years ago, uh, he doesn't have an office at the Spellblade facility. So we had to, to tweak the script a bit. And we rented a uh, uh, an office to have a meeting in, and we sent a um, you know, ten gold piece adventurer to go and tell the other adventurers that there's, there's this guy that wants to hire you. Oh, and I don't know if if we'd sorted out this uh, slight ambiguity last time. We figured out what was up with the map. Uh, we got it from the guy that uh, we met right after we came out of the du- the dungeon. We gave him the cortex, and he gave us the map. Gotcha. Right. So we're not actually... So it actually, wasn't... You, you're not yeah. actually getting a cortex. Yeah, we're not getting a cortex. That right. would have been so cool. <laughs> we <we'd> inadvertently, <laughs> like, this wasn't part of the plan, but now we have a cortex. <laughs> um, who was it? I think it was Robin that said, why don't we just go and rob the guy that has the cortex? And I'm yeah. like, because, because I mean, it never came up again afterwards, so we should be free to be able to do that. <laughs> and I'm like, why? Why? Why do we suddenly want the cortex again? <laughs> Uh, but you know how it is. There was this, like, hey, maybe we can get the cortex. Oh, cool. No, yeah. you can't. Oh, that's not fair. <laughs> we have to go get it. So anyway. You probably could have bought one for like 500 gold <laughs> if, when you're back in the Udlands, which is really expensive for that, cause, yeah. but still, yeah. 500 gold well, is we, cheap to you. We could always pop back to the Udlands later. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, as soon as things settle down, that might be a, a, a thing Just to do. Back, get some artifacts. Some shop- yeah, we gotta go shopping. We've got, <laughs> we've leveled up a bunch. We need to go shopping. <laughs> Let's go back two thousand years. <laughs> anyway, uh, first we have to finish our current stack of urgent, urgent quests. Right. And then maybe possibly urgently try and kill the time mages so they don't screw with us anymore. <laughs> so anyway. The, uh, the party is notified, come to the thing. Cricket is disguised as Kalinar, sitting at the dip- diplomat's table um, in the office, waiting. And the rest of the party is in the office next door. And then the guy that runs the building says, Hey, there's a group to see you. Mm-hmm. It's a group of Warforged, and they're here to kill the party. <laughs> And then just as that combat begins, the other group arrives. The, uh, those 500 gold piece adventurers were hiring to deliver this diplomatic envoy. Yep. And the session begins. <laughs> yeah. So the Warforged brought along a nice present for us. Uh, <laughs> never do anything cool. Because then the party will just take it. <laughs> they, they had these like portable man-sized siege engine things. Okay. Uh, one was like a whole rack of lumber. They were all, both like that. All, oh, they were? They were yeah. two, two of the same thing? Yeah. I thought one was some weird lump, uh, lightning thing or something. No. Okay, I didn't think it ever got fired, so I, I didn't know what it was. I think it was represented by the key. They were both fired. Oh, okay. They were both the same thing. Alright, I guess I just missed it because I was too busy with my head in my hands going like this the whole time. So anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it was sort of like a rectangular thing. I imagine, like, you know the trays for, at, at like, Ikea or a place like that where you where you put trays on you roll them or, like, at a hospital? They were like that, but, like, 50% bigger, and it was a giant hanging mess of apparatuses with a bunch of, like, fence posts. <laughs> just in it. Yeah. You pull a lever and bam, it fires one. Yeah. Which is great because Robert was like insistent that he said that Hank was leaning on the door yeah. of the thing. And so so they, I was like, fine, the door opens, bam! You get you get hit, you get yeah. knocked five feet and knocked, five squares and knocked from yeah. Yeah. back of the room. So Hank, <laughs> the, the, the opening gamut of the fight is a surprise round. Yeah. Uh, Hank gets blasted across the room. Uh, and then was it uh, Aram Ben Jarad who had that feat? Yeah, Ron yeah. Medjerod can't be surprised. Mm. <coughs> so he gets so, to act during the surprise round. Yeah, and so then there was a, a um, uh, initiative roll-off with just Medjerod, mm. and he won, so he got to go next. Nice. I mean, technically, he should have gone before um, uh, Hank, Hank got hammered, but that wouldn't make any sense. You're right, yeah. It's like, you can act first. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> I guess I hang around. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. 
so what did Aram Brendra do? I think... Um, I don't even remember. Um, he's not auto-critting anymore. Yeah. Normally this would mean that... Well, normally. During the auto-crit phase, this would mean a Warforged dies. He, but, uh, yeah, yeah, he moved up and attacked the guy who had attacked Peg. Well, and didn't then, he, like, pull the... the, the um, yeah, so that's right. He, thing pulled, away? He, pulled, he did a thing yeah, where he, he was able to it pull it. it. So he pulled it into the room, into the onto their yeah. side of the battle. So now we have the siege engine thing. <laughs> they saw Hank with it once, and then we had it. Yeah, there that's was, right, John. Never try and do anything cool. <laughs> there was a, there was a thing where you have to make like an Arcana check and then take a move action to figure out how it actually works. Because mm-hmm. even though it's ours, we've never seen it before. Right. Yeah. So. That actually prevented us from using it a lot. I think we did use it a bit. Yeah, well, serendipity rolled yeah. so high that she just automatically yeah. understood how to use it, but no one else did. Yeah. So she used it some. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and then it was actually annoying because Gerard was in the middle of the road for them all to all charge in, but mm. it didn't make a huge difference. Yeah. So then the rest of the Warforged did their surprise round. Yeah, they came charging in. They only had a standard action, though, of course. So yeah. one of them brought in a second uh, apparatus and um, put it in the corner, but he couldn't fire it. And a few of them came in. Some of them uh, had they had forearms, but then their forearms split into three. No, that's opposite of forearm. Yeah, they, they had, had three they had, forearms yes, each, on each arm. Each of their arms had... It splits into three. Four, three four. at the elbow. Okay. So and each one had a, 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 a ton of weapons. Yeah. Okay. And they, they came in and started slashing up. One slashed up Serendipity and one, I think, slashed up Hank. And then these three guys came in that were just, it was like they were, they replaced all of their normal plating and replaced it with just tower shields. So their whole body was just tower shields. <laughs> yeah. They come in and just start punching you with a shield. Yeah. And they started hitting Krosis. And they actually did some damage because Krosis, during the surprise round, couldn't put up his like BS you can't ever hurt me ability mm-hmm. yeah. so they actually hurt him some didn't, um, they, didn't they take serendipity down to zero right off the bat or something or was that later just, no, they just hurt she, her up a bunch they were they were going to but then um, uh, she had some escape ah, thing okay. And then oh, and right, Hank had a different staff, escape. Her staff of defense did something weird. Yes, her staff of defense made yeah. a shield that blocked so that she didn't... Um, yeah. They, uh, I think the party was getting worried because Cricket's in the other room, so their healer's in the other room. Yeah. And then Warforged come in, and there's a lot of them, and they, and they hit them hard. There were two... There were, there were two of the slashy guys, three of the shield guys, two leaders... Yeah, one guy... One and two of, apparatuses. One guy was the leader. He came in, and he was like... Uh, you know, the death of the party is optimal. <laughs> yeah, which is great. It did it did morale damage, damage to everyone, and all the warforged got ten temporary hit points yeah. from it. So, and that regenerated. So later on, he did it again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, it was a, it was a, a rough opening round. I mean, we took away one of their apparatuses right off the bat, so that was nice. It, it reduced their abilities. But mm-hmm. uh, in a subsequent round, uh, we did some arcana checks and. These guys were like level 23 elites and level 25 <laughs> elites and stuff. So, wow. yeah. And they outnumbered us. Yeah. Especially with Cricket out of the picture. So, yeah. Yeah, this is going to be a hard fight. Uh, meanwhile, Cricket's over in the next room, grinning with a strained smile <laughs> as the rest of the, as the past party comes in. <laughs> it's like, all right, yep. Things went awry like the moment they stepped in the door. Uh, and I, Brian was like, maybe Cricket should, you know, hear the co- commotion and go over there. And then oh, the door opens and the yeah. party enters. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was starting to, to mull over whether I should do that. And John was like, oh, I guess they arrive now. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, the party walks in. Uh, and for those who don't remember five years ago, <laughs> the state of the party, they don't have Serendipity Van Goldstar and Lord Toppler Tower Ship so Strides to mm. save your children mm-hmm. uh, with them because the party meets her right after this meeting. Uh-huh. And everyone's all sad because Adderon just died. Only he didn't because Cricket faked it. Right. But only she knows that. Only she knows that. And uh, so Aurora's in the party, 
and she's doing your standard, you know, I, I want to know about your grandmother stuff. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, she is remembering more than she did last time. It's already a divergence. I think already we've pulled a Jenga block. Pulled one Jenga block. When, our, when our little 10 gold piece uh, messenger... I don't think he cost ten gold pieces, was he? I think it was like one gold yeah, piece. Yeah, he was, he was cheaper than that. Hmm. We, wouldn't, we wouldn't send a ten gold piece. It's, it's only our existence that's on the line here. <laughs> We're not going to overspend on that. Anyway, yeah, when he showed up and talked about uh, Kalinar Jirago, she remembered more than she did last time because she's got an extra copy of herself in the time loop. In mm. her head. Right, yeah. She's self kalashed hard. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah. So, Aurora comes in and she's, she's all like, you know, I, I'm sure I know you kind of thing. Tell me about your grandmother. Mm-hmm. Um, and Croesus is there and he is still super crazy. Mm-hmm. It's, it's actually interesting. Tim was role playing past Croesus, and it, he has actually improved a lot mm. since then. Okay. Well, he's changed a lot since then. I don't know if it's necessarily better or not. <laughs> and Hank. Hank's. Uh, is that the whole party at the time? Cricket, Aurora, Hank, and Croesus. Yeah, should we Yep, that was it. That's all that's there. So, they hear this commotion next door, and because everyone in, every, all the players in this game like to screw with each other and try and ruin everything as much as possible, they're all like, maybe we should go next door and see what's going on over there. What's all this no- noise about? And so I'm like trying to roll bluffs and stuff to say, no, it's just construction work going on. They're doing hammer drilling. It's, it's, yeah. And, and so, yeah. and meanwhile, and then John is like, "Die, you foul machine!" Yeah. Yeah. Are you sure that's construction? They're they're playing both sides of this, and yeah. both sides are trying to <laughs> screw with cricket's screw with attempts cricket's to attempts. yeah to make this. Yeah, we do a little bit of the role playing with cricket pretending to be. Uh, Benjarat, mm-hmm. or not Benjarat, uh, Kalinar, mm-hmm. and then we switch back to the the combat. <clears throat> now I'm I'm sort of since I wasn't involved in the combat, um, some of this stuff I wasn't paying as close attention to as I normally would. Right. So I remember some of the events that happened, but I'm not entirely sure about their ordering. They, Croesus and Serendipity decided to do the same thing they did in the Mind Flayer fight. Mm where Croesus puts up his kitchen and then Serendipity makes everyone punch each other. Right. So that Croesus can go and uh, opportunity attack everyone. Mm-hmm. So they set that up. I think that's the thing they have to set up one round and then pull off the next or something. No, they can do it right off the bat and okay. she can do it twice. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking like... I don't... I like that they found an overpowered combo. The pro, or I don't mind it, but the problem is it takes so long. Mm. So I'm there's, a lot of yeah. there's no reason not to do it every single combat. And my concern is it's really boring for the other players. Mm. So I've been thinking about like ways we can like some way I can like either like just say, oh well whenever you do this, we just take such and such damage off, or I'm gonna take this away but give mm. you something that makes you just as happy. Mm. Just because I, I don't mind that they can do this thing, but it just I feel like like as soon as it happens, I know it's like Robert gets out his phone, like yeah. people just check out because it's like just hits everyone. Basically. Yeah, basically every uh, everyone hits each other, and mm. then Croesus each hits all of them. Right. So they all basically yeah. take two hits. Right. Maybe treat it more like an area attack, especially in this case where a lot of the the guys involved were identical. Mm-hmm. You know, just roll roll the damage once. And just roll a bunch of two hits. Well, you can look at like the average damage all the monsters do, mm. and the average damage Croesus does. Yeah. And just be like, you get the, you get like fifty yeah. percent of the average of those or something. I guess if like Brian said, if they have to roll for the tax, it's not that different than than um, yeah. Roll, roll one attack. Yeah, roll one attack or something. At the high levels, the damage roll. There's a lot of dice, and you have to count them all up. Yeah. You know? So the damage rolls are, are more mm, stuff to do. Yeah. An attack roll is still just a d20. Roll d20, boom, okay, you hit, you didn't. That's yeah. true, yeah. So it could just maybe, yeah, you could speed it up just by having average damage. 
or roll the damage once. Yeah. Right. It's also complicated by like thinking about, oh well, I'm gonna have this guy attack this guy yeah. so that he can get knocked back, and this guy has to attack first. Mm. And yeah. if it was just like, you know, well, let's just just attack everyone, and you can just have it work out how you want it. Like yeah. if you mm-hmm. want this guy to attack that guy, that guy to attack this guy, and get knocked back, just that happens. You don't mm. have to figure it out. Right. Yeah. That would also help. So they did that. And, like, yeah, every, everyone attacked everyone. It all went berserk. There was a lot of noise. In the other room, they get they get thumped against the wall. The, pa- the painting falls off the wall. And so Cricket is trying to explain all of this. <laughs> no, we're not even getting to the, the, you know, I have this diplomatic envoy, you have to blah, blah, blah. No, it's all about the construction work next door. <laughs> and all about how, you know, oh, no, we shouldn't go over there. There's asbestos. Mm-hmm. Or whatever. <laughs> All you need to do is just get them to just get them to take the box. Yeah, but we're not getting to that. Just Hank, take this box and go. <laughs> Past Hank goes over the wall and he's like pounding on it, saying, "Shut up over there! We're in a meeting." Past Croesus mm. is like, "I don't know. That sounds like combat, guys. <laughs> I think there's fighting going on." And I'm like, "No, it's construction." All right, <laughs> I'll try to make it construction. <laughs> I remember Hank jumps up on the bar because there's like a little sidebar and all the glasses clink on the other side and he starts fighting I think it was Hank that jumped up there yeah no it was Croesus because Croesus teleported over there as part of the mm. his teleport thing I'm not exactly sure what Hank did but then the Warforged turn came yeah. and they they hit back fairly hard although mostly they just hit Croesus who just ignored their damage and um and they fired their corner apparatus. No, they, actually, this, this I think I'm mixing that, up two yeah. different rounds. Because the first they fired the apparatus... Oh, they, more than one Warforce can fire it. Yeah. They fired the apparatus at um, Serendipity. <laughs> and she was uh, almost dead. And she was right against the far wall. And so it, it hit her and smashed her through the wall into the alleyway outside, ripping like a chunk of the wall off. <laughs> yeah. And she crashes into the garbage cans and they go flying away. And the cat <laughs> goes running out. And, and next door, Aurora is like, oh, that sounded like a cat in trouble. <laughs> so I'm trying to explain to Aurora that no, the cat is fine. It's been screaming like that all the time, etc., etc. Blah, blah, blah. I have a quest for you people, <laughs> by the way. But yeah, it was great. I think Aurora went to zero hit points. Or Serendipity? Uh, yeah. Sorry, yeah, Serendipity went to zero hit points. Mm. <laughs> and got blasted through the wall into a pile of garbage. But she was very like adamant. the worst thing. Yeah. yeah, but no, she was adamant that every morning she casts fastidiousness. Yeah. Mm. So instead there was just a Serendipity-shaped outline in the garbage where none of the garbage had touched her. Yeah. <laughs> so Aram Benjarad runs over there with, because we don't have a healer now. Yeah. But he's got the magic acorns, the, the good berries or whatever. Right, yeah. And uh, jams one down her throat, so serendipity comes back online. A poison grape. <laughs> what, oh, what was it that she said when... There was something... Shoot, it was funny, but I don't remember. Yeah. Because he shoved that thing down her throat, and she, um, I don't remember. She complained about something. He <laughs> saved her life, and she was like... I don't remember. Yeah. I love how Aram Ben Gerard and Serendipity have this this rivalry enemy thing going on. <laughs> but anyway, so I was just glad that, that they didn't hammer her through the wall into the office because that would have been that would have been very disruptive. It's like why is this duplicate of myself? And I'm like construction, construction. <laughs> <laughs> they fired the apparatus at process and knocked him off the bar mm. and the whole bar in there the whole bar crashed over and there's a huge smash of smashing glass and the bar on on the on cricket side I don't think yeah. it tipped it just it just thumped and all the yeah. glasses clinked inside of it yeah and they but they could hear everything smashing and falling and yep it's a good thing I have epic bluff <laughs> just like Kalinar did mm. So finally I get to telling these adventurers, and it's funny, John dug up the YouTube video with the retelling mm-hmm. of the session that, you know, where we actually got this quest. And uh, there's my voice in there <laughs> talking about how, you know, this was a terrible mi- mission, we really shouldn't have accepted it and all that. So past Cricket 
is like the most adamantly opposed. <laughs> so future Cricket's having to convince past Cricket that this to is a mission that she considers. She probably still considers stupid. Oh yeah, mm. but it's a part of history now. Yeah, stupid history. Stupid history. <laughs> but history nonetheless. It needs to happen. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, also yeah, <laughs> it shouldn't have been called a diplomatic envoy. Mm. The diplomatic package. But that was the word that was used, mm -hmm. and history must be preserved. So, yeah. Someone else got blown through a wall the next round. Who was it? Was it Hank? So, the next round, Serendipity woke up, ran over to the apparatus, and used her action point. No, she must use more than one action point. Mm. But you can't she, use more than one action point. She had... She, no, she... That's right. She used her second ability that also lets her do... Make everyone attack each other again. Uh -huh. But some of the Warforged were next to uh, the apparatuses. And so oh, they yeah. were able to use their attack just to fire the apparatus. So they started firing the apparatuses at each other. And one, the one they had pulled into the room, one of them fired it at the guy who was standing by the door. And it uh, smashed him through, like, the piece of wall beside the door, through into the hallway into the next room across. Mm. Uh, Disrupted um, whatever meeting was going on yeah. in that room. <laughs> yeah, I was like, the, I, was, I said there was some guys in that room, and they were like, that's it, I'm out. He walks out of the room, <laughs> pull three Jenga blocks. <laughs> I, 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 that was yeah, a it joke. it didn't actually make us pull the Jenga blocks. Um, Turns out there was some other super important bit of history going on in this building. <laughs> Yeah. It's still going to be a bit annoying, though, because now the hallway that the past party is going to walk out of when they leave this office uh -huh. has all these holes punched through the wall, <laughs> that Warford shaped hole in the wall, debris everywhere. <laughs> yeah, and followed by like maniacal laughter. The Warford <laughs> smashed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Serendipity was quite pleased that mm. she got comeuppance on them. Now yeah. who's how a do pile you, of garbage? Yeah. How, do you, how do you like it? Are you guys sure this is construction? <laughs> oh, and I should mention, even though it didn't come up in this particular session, we did agree at the beginning that my idea about having Cricket give past Cricket uh, another letter of mm -hmm. here's things to do to make things work was a good idea. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do that as, as we part. We didn't quite do that by the end of this session, so presumably at the beginning of next session. <laughs> Yeah, they hammered on the Warforge, and of course, Warforge is super hard to kill. I think they managed to kill one of one of them. There was a whole bunch of dazed by the end of all the fighting. The the guy who got knocked through the wall was killed. He was one of the leaders, mm. and they managed to kill the other leader right after that. Yeah. And because of that, I let the Intimidate champion, which I think was Hank, because Cricket wasn't in the room, uh, make an Intimidate check which was successful, and the, uh, because their leaders were dead, the other Warforged broke ranks and fled. Mm. And that was actually the end of the session as well. We were we actually ran a little late on that one. It was quite a quite a combat. Yeah. And I spent the whole time basically just trying to convince the past party that it was construction work to stop <laughs> and paying attention to that and pay attention to the things you have to pay attention to for the timeline. Yeah, no ah. yeah. and all the paintings in their room fell off the walls. Yeah. And all the stuff <laughs> fell over. We're going to lose our security deposit. Yeah. Yeah. But yes, I was actually, I was making plans because earlier in the combat, it was looking pretty dire. The uh, These were some really tough warboards, never a lot of them. Mm. So I was starting to think, okay, what's my plan in the event of a TPK minus Cricket? What's Cricket going to do? Right. And I had some plans. Mm. And uh, the party won, so they, I don't get to use them. But I think they were kind of cool plans. I was going to give... Uh, the Panadar in the box to the pass party, and then I was going to stealthily follow them around because right. I had to stay within range of that Panadar. I'm assuming the Warforged would have taken the Panadar that Serendipity had. Right. So I followed the party around, and then uh, when they sleep, I would borrow the Panadar and try and learn how to use it. <laughs> and, uh, and finish the rest of the yeah. keeping the party time stream alive. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a good thing I'm very stealthy because I think I would have to actually follow them through time a few times if I <laughs> didn't figure out the Panadar right away. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think I could have done it. <laughs> Assuming the Warforge didn't come next door afterwards and yeah. start screwing up directly with time. Cause but it did seem like they could have just done that directly. Yeah, and yeah. I suspect they didn't want to disrupt the, the Kalinar copying. 
they waited until Cricket was in place. And, I mean, partly that means that Cricket's not in the fight, but also you know, seems like a good time to take the party out without disrupting our plans to mm-hmm. make history work. But yeah, it would have been weird because Cricket would have been fully autonomous. Yeah. Um, in theory, she'd have been salvageable, but in practice, since she's allowed to disobey orders in order to maintain her own timeline, mm-hmm. that would have sort of given a time out on that kind of thing until after I was finished. Well, and you might also have been able to do something to save the party from being killed, mm. which I don't I, know if I, I don't know if you feel like I you're have, under obligation to do that. I wouldn't have had any obligation to do that. I might still have found it to be the optimal thing to do. But yeah, I mean, once the party's dead, they don't own me anymore. Right. This is why uh, Cricket, you know, even though her for- former owners, before she met the party, got killed, she hasn't even once mentioned, hey, we've got time travel, let's go and stop her from getting killed. She has no obligation to them anymore. Mm. Same goes for Aurora. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that would actually just complicate things. There's always the... Um, nab them away from certain death and bring them to, to baseline routine. <laughs> yeah. We were speculating and I was, there was some, a little bit more grumbling about how we went and saved those 400 um, kids. About how, you know, basically no one throughout history ever actually died. They just got <laughs> snatched by the party and brought to baseline. Brought to baseline, yeah. So all of, and that's why, you know, when the Oodpocalypse happened, there actually wasn't an Oodpocalypse. <laughs> Everyone just Everyone went to just the future. Everyone just got kidnapped 2,000 years into the future. <laughs> Could be. I think it started out when we were talking about how we could go back and loot all of the magic items from the Apocalypse. Mm. But yeah, <laughs> I don't think that this is practical. <laughs> for one thing, there's not enough food in the baseline for everyone. And I said, okay, in that case what will happen is everyone will start starving. And as they starve, we'll have to kidnap them further into the future. Right, yeah. Whenever they were about to die of starvation. The end of time is massively overpopulated. Like that Star Trek episode where the that sun's gonna go supernova, so they build a device that can send you back mm, in time and difference. Yeah. And then that's like you live out your life in a time period. So all the people who were alive when the planet went supernova <laughs> just like scatter to different parts of history and live out their lives there. <laughs> I hope they don't have children or whatever, because that's gonna cause a feedback loop. <laughs> Although in the episode you have to be changed specially to live in the past, maybe part of that change is sterilization. Mm. <laughs> I happen to know that that's not the fact. There's a couple of novels, Star Trek novels, called Tomorrow's Sun, or no, Yesterday's Sun. And then there's a sequel to it, I can't remember what it's called, but Yesterday's Sun was the first one. Wherein uh, Spock actually got that woman pregnant, and yeah, with his unvulcan like ways, yeah, because he was going all, all feral, surl, yeah, feral. <laughs> <laughs> it's a feral Vulcan, run for your lives, yeah. So, there was a series of novels where they rescued uh, him from the, the ice age, the, whatever. Mm. Yeah, oh, his, his son, or his son, yeah, and then some other stuff happened. I can't remember what I know, I've read those, but I can't remember anything about the details a long time ago. Anyway, that was our adventure. So next one, I will I will see the past party off, um, try and explain away the Warforged-sized holes in the walls, give Cricket her... It's just construction. <laughs> demolition. <Yep. laughs> Wait, they were doing demolition of the building while we were having a meeting. <laughs> well, they were demolishing it out of the room next to it, set up for something. Oh, yeah, I remember, actually, demolition came up as an excuse for what's going on, and, and Robert has actually done demolition in mm. real life. And so he was talking about how, you know, like, oh, don't go over there. It's it's it, When there's demolition, it's terrible. You don't yeah. want to be in there. Yeah. You know, <laughs> they don't give you adequate safety equipment. Mm. <laughs> yeah. That was so bad. I, like, destroyed his lungs. Anyway. Well, that's quite a story. Yeah. But you still have not resolved anything. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 guys. Just, just let them, just let them run. Let them run. Next time they'll help us save the world or something. Stupid war forged. Um, Mr. Kalinar, are you sure everything's okay over there? Because I'm, I thought I heard someone shouting and, and 
I'm just a little nervous. I think maybe we should go and just check no, and just make no, sure that no, no children it's, it's or all right. whatever. Are it's in all right. <laughs> you stupid tin can. Take that. <laughs> Did you hear that? Oh, yes. Uh, I've been hearing uh, that. I've been hearing that a lot. It's what? just construction. And it's just, just construction. As Rosa says, it's just construction. It just sounds just like maybe someone might need our no, help a little. No, no, no. I wish... I wish... <laughs> this sound could be there. No, no, it's all right. I it's all right. Adderall. I am very familiar with that sound. I've been Adderall hearing it a lot. Here. He, he would know just what to do. Cricket, what what should we do? Should we go and see if they're okay? Don't, I, I, think, I think we should just leave, frankly. This is a bad deal. Okay, Cricket says we should go. Come on, guys, let's go. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Kalinar, we're not interested. No, 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 it, it's, it's a good deal because you're going there anyway, right? That's true, and we'd be helping someone. Cricket helping people is good. I wish Adderon were here. It's all right, it's all right. Everything listen, listen, is as it was. Listen, guys, it's... Uh, it's you know what it's it's, <laughs> it's the law we're going to take this box and go okay I'm not I'm not feeling comfortable here at all <laughs> I think you should listen to Croesus ooh ah odd thing to say but there we go yes <sighs> don't listen to cricket listen to Croesus yes that's probably the only time I'm ever going to say that how dare you throw me in that filth? You're going to pay for this. Uh, I'm so sick of these warforges coming all the time at the worst times, at the least optimal times. And I don't even know why they're coming. Sometimes they help us. Sometimes they kill us. Oh, and now they're, they're leaving, those cowards. Ugh.